All right, video number two this Monday morning. We're going to talk about our assignments. These are all things I demoed for you in class. They were due last week before coronavirus hit. Um, so you guys should be very well along, and it's just a matter of finishing these up. The uh, school has asked us to give you all a couple weeks to get caught up on everything, get used to the new normal. Uh, so these are the things you can be working on between now and April 6th. They are due on April 6th, so please do continue to work on them. I put this bucket right in the front of everything to remind you that you want to work from a bucket of water. Use that to rinse your hands and your tools. Do not rinse anything in a sink. Do not put clay down your pipes. So first of all, we've got our spheres. And most of you, I think, are done with your spheres. Originally, when we talked about these, we talked about sprigging, carving, piercing, and we talked about using colored slips and underglazes. Um, you can buy commercial slips and underglazes if you want. Jerry's Artorama is open, and you can get little two-ounce bottles of speedball um, slip or underglaze if you want to, but you don't have to. Since we can't currently provide those to you, that's just not going to be an option for us to finish up these projects, and we're just going to roll with that. Um, so do the best you can, get your spheres finished up. A lot of you were challenged by the coil project, and you can see I haven't even finished mine yet, but I'm getting closer. I think I'm going to do a little figurative thing with this, and so I will show you how this comes along. I'm not really sure how I'm going to finish it at this point. Um, but don't forget, now that you have your tools, yay, we got our tools. You got your metal rib. You're going to spend a lot of time with your metal rib. You can push out with the metal rib to make it um, bigger, and then you can switch over to your paddle to paddle things in and make it smaller. So work on that shape. Again, you can carve, you can pierce, you can sprig, um, but we're not going to be working with colored slips or underglazes unless you buy your own. Um, the third thing we talked about was our soft slab project. We took a slab, we wrapped it around a cylinder, and that cylinder can be, you know, a spray oil or a PVC pipe or a glass that you have at home or a can of spray paint, anything that's round. You could wrap it around a can of paint. Um, anyway, you wrap it around to get your round shape. I gave you several options as far as how to do the bottoms. One was just to put a flat bottom on. And then we did our three-cornered base, and we did our four-cornered. This was kind of the little pillow shape. And this one, you actually cut out your four corners, and then you folded them. And that's what squared it off. And then you turned it over, and you gave it a little pop, and the whole thing kind of pillowed out, which was it's just a really nice little effect. This one we didn't cut. We just marked the three corners, and we collapsed them in, slipped them. Um, here's an example of that three-corner on this coffee mug. Okay, so you can do just a regular flat one, nothing fancy. You can do the four corner, you can do the three corner as far as your base. We pulled handles. We also did a thing where we rolled out the carrot and slapped the carrot, slip score, attach a handle. Um, we talked about lids, we talked about flanges. Okay, if you want to do a teapot. And we rolled out this spout, it was just kind of um, a truncated triangle that we rolled up and we slipped and scored and we attached it to make the spout. You could also do a bottle form like this one I have here or you could just do a simple coffee mug. Um, whoops, there's a coffee mug. That's the teapot. Uh, remember that your lids should fit well so they shouldn't rattle around in there but you don't want them so snug that they're difficult to get in and out. Alright, so that was your soft slab project. And then back to your hard slab project. I posted last week um, a video off of YouTube. It was four parts to making a puzzle box, which is another type of a hard slab project. I wanted to show you this here. This I made very similar to the way she made her puzzle boxes. Okay, so I went ahead and I closed up my whole form and then I went back and I cut this lid separately. So that is one way you can do your hard slab project. And if you like that look and you try to like and you want to try that look, go back and look at that four part video that I sent you last week by email. And it comes with all sorts of commentary in the email itself about things that she did that I liked and didn't like. But if you will recall what we learned at school before you went on break was this hard slab project. I'm going to apologize. Um, I don't have a lid. Um, the one with the lid is still at school. So we're going to imagine that I have a lid with a handle on here, um, but we just cut our pieces. 
Um, this was a five by seven box, so I did four pieces that were five by seven. Five by seven, five by seven, five by seven. The lid is five by seven. The sides, five by five. I mitered the edges, slipped and scored, and assembled it. Add in a handle to my lid, which I know you're just going to have to imagine that. And then I put it up on feet to get it so it's raised up off the table. And you can see that casts a nice little shadow under there, and it just lifts it up and gives it some grace. Don't forget, you're going to roll your slab, you're going to texture your slab, you're going to let it sit up to leather hard, and then you're going to go ahead and measure and cut. 